Have you ever looked at the Valkyria Chronicles franchise but didn't know where to start? Then this video is for you. We're going to take a look at the series and approach it from a few different angles in order to give you a few different options depending what your circumstances or preferences are. If you already played one or some of the games, you might get a bit of insight on some of the other games in the series as well. By the end, you should have a good understanding of what Valkyria Chronicles is about and how the games differ from one another. Let's start with the basics. Valkyria Chronicles is a turn-based strategy RPG with real-time elements. You select units you want to control from a map. Once you do, the view switches to third-person mode where things happen in real time, for the most part anyway. There's intercepting fire from enemy units, but none of them move around when it's your turn. The game's setting appears to be the Second World War, but there's a bit more to it than that. It's actually an alternate universe where countries and landmass layouts are different to uh, the real world. Technology is different too. For example, aircraft don't exist, but at the same time certain types of weapons or vehicles are a bit more advanced than you might expect from the time period. There are several types of units like scouts who use rifles and walk long distances, shock troopers who can't run as far per turn but can shoot with machine guns, as well as a variety of other ones like snipers, engineers who can fix tanks and resupply ammo, lancers who are anti-tank infantry, tanks themselves, and other vehicles too. Selecting the right units and classes for each mission and understanding their strengths and weaknesses is key to victory. You probably already noticed that there's something going on with the art style as well. The game looks like a watercolor painting with some comic book or manga influences with the visual sound effects here. I really like the look and there's nothing quite like it. The soft and usually muted colors give everything a bit of a dreamy look and feel. Something that brings a bit of life into your squad is the fact that each character is unique. There are no generic units in your squad. Each soldier has their own name, appearance, strengths, weaknesses, and preferences of what other characters they like to be around. Some of them even have side stories where you not only get to learn more about them, but certain weaknesses can also be changed into strengths that makes those characters better in combat. Also, except for the main characters, all other characters will die if they fall and an enemy reaches them before you, or you take too long to evacuate them. The story is that the war, which is called the Second European War, started when two superpowers, the Imperials and the Federation, go to war over fuel, which in this case is a blue ore called Ragnite. It's literally everywhere. Tanks, grenades, healing thingy, you name it. So if you see something that's blue and glowing, it's Ragnite. The Imperials are the baddies here, and the focus of each game's storyline is on a squad that is from a small country called Gallia. Even if the squad isn't always part of the Gallian army, like in Valkyria Chronicles 4, where you're part of the Federation army, the characters themselves have Gallian roots. Many themes you expect from World War II stories are present here and are explored in various ways. While the games tend to be on the more realistic side of the spectrum, there are some fantastical elements that show themselves, usually in the later part of the games. I don't think that's really a spoiler, considering the fact that trailers show Valkyries in them, Oh, and the name. There's four games overall, Valkyria Chronicles 1, 2, 3, and 4. Very simple name and convention there, unlike another series we focused on in the previous video. There is a spin-off called Valkyria Revolution, which we won't talk about because it takes place in another world as Valkyria Chronicles, and it's much more fantasy-oriented, which I don't think is a good thing in the context of this series. It definitely isn't a good representation of what Valkyria Chronicles is about. The four games can be split into two different categories. The first is what I call the traditional games, and the second category consists of the PSP games. Valkyria Chronicles 1 and 2 are the traditional games, with the middle two being the PSP games. There's some distinctive differences between them. The main thing that stands out to me is that VC 2 and 3 have a more fantasy-inspired vibe about them, and the second one more so than the third. The class system is deeper than in Valkyria Chronicles 1 and 4, with certain subclasses having more fantastical weapons. Like the fencer who has a frickin' sword, it's the whole bringing a knife to a gunfight thing. I don't want this shonen action stuff in my World War II, thanks. I know some people are definitely not bothered by it, but part of the charm of VC 1 and 4 is the fact that they still felt somewhat realistic. Throwing in swords or weird weapons totally shatters that illusion for me. Another trait for the PSP games is that maps are often split up into different parts you have to switch between. 
I'm guessing that it's related to the PSP's lack of power, but it's actually done in a clever way where it feels more like a tactical thing you need to think about rather than just the workaround. So good job on that. What I do find a bit disappointing is that the PSP games are easier. You can storm into enemy territory without having to worry too much about the consequences. I mean, you're gonna die if you're an idiot, but you know what I mean. In turn, it's also much easier for your troops to defend from enemy troops trying to rush your base camp. The storylines of VC2 and 3, in my opinion, aren't as good as the other games. VC2 takes place at an academy, which basically makes it a school setting, just gives everything a layer of generic. It's like they tried shoehorning a slice of life high school anime into the game. Plus, there's no feeling of journey like the other games because you're at an academy. VC3 is, in my opinion, a better game and a better representation of the series. Valkyria Chronicles 3 follows a Gallian squad called the Nameless. They're a squad made up of people who committed some sort of offense and have their names erased from records and are only referred to as numbers. To me, it feels like a really try-hard way to appear all edgy and dark. At least that's how I saw it before I actually played the game. I think the story is actually much better than I feared it would be, but both PSP games could still be improved if the story was presented better. Conversations feel short and rushed through, but there are animated anime sections, which are nice to see. VC 1 and 4 feel much more like a journey to me because of the more elaborate and big maps and the more detailed cutscenes, though there are no animated anime segments. I do want to give some credit to the third game though, because the map view is a cool way for players to gain some perspective, as well as directly show where you're going and where you've been. It's cool to see how the front lines move around as you complete more and more missions. There are some more positives about the PSP games I want to mention. One nice thing is that some aspects of gameplay are quicker and more convenient. For example, evacuating or having troops retreat is faster to do because there are no animations bogging down gameplay. The large amount of subclasses can be also a good thing for people who like customizing their squad too. It might sound like I'm complaining about these two games a lot, and I am, but I think they're still really good because of their underlying gameplay. Me and most fans of the series just aren't into the direction the PSP games went in. That's why I recommend starting with Valkyria Chronicles 1, the original. I think compared to the PSP games, it's superior in terms of gameplay, graphics, and storytelling. When playing, you'll notice it's much harder trying to rush into enemy territory. You take much more damage from intercepting fire, which means you have to think more about how you move your units around the map. The maps feel bigger as well, because they are, and you can actually look up and down. There's a vertical element that just doesn't exist with the PSP games. The various maps are very different from each other and offer all kinds of variations like tight and twisty places and open areas. There aren't any class trees here, but equipment does branch out into two or three different branches. That way you can give certain units weapons that have specific strengths. I think that works much more elegantly than in the PSP games because once you've developed or received your weapons, you can change them out from mission to mission depending on your playing style or what the mission requires. Also, the weapons are just more realistic. No swords here. The story also does a much better job at exploring various events from the Second World War. Ethnic cleansing, weapons of mass destruction, the concept that there are good and bad people on both sides of the war are not only topics that get YouTube videos demonetized, but they are also touched on in the game's story. The whole theme of the game is to show how people are trying to maintain their humanity despite the horrors of war. Somehow Valkyria Chronicles manages to do that while still retaining a romanticized view of war, which reminds me a bit of classic war stories. These days they try to make World War II style games brutal and gritty in order to show the horrors of war, yet lives of people are almost shown in a disposable manner. In Valkyria Chronicles, People's lives come across as valuable things without the game having to be all graphic. And just to go back into uh, the gameplay just a bit, whereas the PSP games can feel a bit constricted, VC1, and 4 for that matter, feel like they have more nuances in gameplay. You can be more precise with running around and aiming and all you know that sort of stuff. And I'm sure you can see that just in the gameplay footage. The fourth game of the series is almost the same, according to some people, but there are still differences. The graphics are noticeably better, but not to such an extent to make the first game look ugly or anything. I noticed some nice improvements on the textures, a broader range of colors, and higher polygon models. 
There's a new type of class called the Grenadier as well. Not only can they hit units behind buildings or bits of scenery, but they also deal intercepting fire towards enemies. Sounds a bit overpowered perhaps, but enemies have them too and can be a real worry to deal with. If possible, I still recommend people play the first game because the story is better at introducing the world. The fourth game leaves many things unexplained, as if it expects you to have played one or more of the previous games. Also, the story has some common anime tropes that are perhaps a little bit more obvious here than in the first game. So my recommendations seem to be pretty clear, I think. If you were to play them in the opposite order and play the fourth one first, then uh, it might be weird going back to the first game because the graphics are noticeably not as good and there's also some gameplay refinements and features that are really handy in the fourth game that are not there in the first game. The PSP games, I think, are still worth playing. If you have a Vita and or PSP, then you might want to consider them. I think they're one of the best games on both systems, despite what I was complaining about. VC2 was released in the West both physically and digitally, but VC3 wasn't. That game remained in Japan only because of how badly VC2 sold. If you have a modded system or use an emulator, then you can get a fan-translated version. You'll find it if you Google it and see how you like it. I will say that my perspective of the PSP games have been formed by the disappointment that they were not home console games. It's similar with Okami and Okamiden, which is, by the way, how it's pronounced, despite what some commenters have been saying. The names of the games are set right at the beginning of the main menu, so it's not exactly hard to figure out. Anyway, that's not the point. Most of the time, you really lose a lot when going from a home console to a weaker portable system in terms of gameplay functions. The Switch really doesn't have that because, you know, it's in terms of power much more close to a home console. But uh, in terms of the PS3 at the time and the PSP, yeah, there's a notable difference there. But I can't blame the developers for going that direction, both with Valkyria Chronicles and Okami actually. Both games flopped hard, so it's only natural for companies to not invest resources into something that turned out not to make them money. I think it would be cool if maybe someone who really likes the PSP games can comment on some things on why they like the PSP games more. I'm sure there are people who want to get into the series and would genuinely enjoy the PSP games more, but might not play them because my bias is painting a bad picture of those games. Let me know in the comments. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully it was helpful to you. Like the video if you did. Pressing the like button does help out a lot and it makes a difference on YouTube. Subscribe if you want to see future videos. You can now also become a channel member. You might have seen that join button down there. Not only do you get exclusive updates, but also early access to most of the videos. So if that interests you, click the join button under the video. Patreon is also a great place to directly support me and you can even get your name up onto the uh, one of the end cards there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.